from your own personal experience, what do you see as a response to your all's preaching? Well, there's always the few that appreciate us, but the as a rule, the majority is always against us, and I believe that that's the way it should be. That's that's the biblical way. You know, why, why do you say that? Yeah, because. People have this idea that everybody loved Jesus, you know, and Jesus right. was just, you know, so liked by everybody, and he was always uh, hugging people and never rejected anybody, accepted everybody just as they were, and that's really unbiblical. John 7, 7, Jesus said, The world cannot hate you, but me it hates, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. So Jesus said the world hated him because he testified that the world was evil. And he said in John 15, if they hated me, they'll hate you also. And in Hebrews 12, 3 says, Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weird and faint in your minds. So the multitude was always against Jesus. Jesus said in Luke 6, 26, Woe unto you, and all men shall speak well of you. For so right. said they about the false prophets. And you know the Bible said in 1 John 1, 5 that God is light. And John 3, 19 and 20 says, This is the condemnation that light, God is yeah. light, light has come into the world, but right. men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light or hates God. Neither comes to light lest his deeds should be reproved. All right. And so, you know, verse after verse, there's so many verses in the Bible that's very clear that sinners are enemies of God. They, they hate God. You got an and, example? And so if they're... Of right, lots of them. Okay. Romans 5.10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. There's no need for reconciliation unless you're an enemy. Jesus said in Matthew 6.24, No man can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the oh, other. See. And Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And so if your sin is breaking God's commandments, so if a person's sinning and they're breaking God's commandments, they're not loving God, they're not serving Him. And mm -hmm. so if you're not serving God, then you, then you don't love God. And since you don't love God, then you hate God. Right. That's what Jesus said. Right. Uh, Romans 8, 7 says, For the, the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to law of God, neither indeed can be. All right. Uh, James 4, 4 says, You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Okay. And so, if the world is an enemy of God, and, and sinners hate God like Jesus, Jesus said in uh, John 15, 25, they hated me without a cause. Okay. If that's true, the only way to make a holy God attractive to sinners that hate Him is you got to make Him into something that He's not. I see. And so, we're not out there. Uh, there is one sense in which sinners ought to be attracted to our life, to what we have. But there's, there's another sense in which they hate God, so what we need to do is we need to bring the fear of God. And that's, what, that's really what we're trying to do. Is, you know, I'm out there to bring the fear of God. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. All right. It, it, somebody can't come into a knowledge of God or relationship with God until they first fear God. Right. And, and Jesus said in Luke 13, 3 and 5, Except you repent, you'll all likewise perish. And repentance is to forsake sin, to turn from sin. And Proverbs 16, 6 says, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Right. Proverbs 8, 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And so until men hate sin, until they fear God, they're never going to forsake their sin. They're never going to turn from their sin. They're I never going to repent. And they can never get saved. Yeah. And, you know, people say, well, you know, you're not supposed to be out here just scaring people. I said, well, Jude says some have, com Jude uh, 22 and 23 says, some have compassion making a difference. Others save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Right. And so we're out there to bring the fear of God. All right. Uh, I guess I, I got my fourth question here. So it's not your primary goal to anger people. I mean, you're not just out there to make them mad. You're out there to, to provoke a fear of the Lord, uh, ultimately to the saving of their soul. 
Is that is that accurate? I mean, or are you just out there to antagonize and to fight with these people because it's entertainment? Obviously, from your response there, it sounds like that you are concerned about their soul, and you're not just trying to anger them, but you're more or less trying to make them angry at themselves and at their sin and their rebellion against God. Is, is that accurate? Well, we, we're not out there to intentionally anger people. Now, we do expect people to be angry. You oh, know, okay. Jesus said in First Peter, uh, well, Jesus didn't, but the Word of God, Jesus says the Word of God, First Peter 2.9 says that Jesus is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, you know, Paul said, uh, you know that the gospel was an offense. He says the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. And he said in Galatians 5, 11, says, If I then preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. So in and of itself, it's an, it's an offensive message. Now we do want to get people's attention. You know, I don't, we're not going out there with a, with a ready-made crowd. You know, we're not going out there and everybody's just sitting out there waiting to listen to us. Yeah. Now, it may right. be like that after a few days. Okay. But we've got to get their attention. You know, we've got a, we've got a message uh, that's life or death. You know, it's, it's their, their eternal jeopardy is hanging in the balance. Right. And so it, it's, a, it's an urgent message, and we, we must get their attention. And so... We want to say things in a way that will get their attention. You know, I say things on purpose that are, that are biblical and that I believe, but that are politically incorrect. I mean, right. the Bible is politically incorrect. Correct. I understand. But, you know, things like, you know, the Bible does teach that sinners are children of the devil. You know, a lot right. of people have this idea that we're all God's children, and we're not all God's children according to the Bible. Scripture that would show that we're all God's creation. Well, uh, John eight forty four, okay. you are of your father the devil. Okay. First John three ten, in this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Okay, and, you know Jesus said as many uh, uh, as many as uh, John one twelve as many as received of them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. But it's only those that believe on His name. Okay. And believe means obey. Right. Uh, those are the children of God. So, you know, we're not all children of God. Okay. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people believe that... Something that I learned was that when people hear God loves you, God loves you unconditionally, God loves you unconditionally, God loves you unconditionally, over and over again, what they're associating and what they're hearing is that God's forgiveness is unconditional, and God's mercy is unconditional, and it's anything but un—it's uh, anything but unconditional. Okay. It's totally conditional. Uh, Jesus said, "Except you repent, you all likewise perish." Mm -hmm. And so we try to, you know, I try to play off of all these things to get people's attention. You know, I don't want to. I, I, I'm going out there with a sharp sword. You know, the Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. You know, right, I'm, right. I'm, I'm out there to pierce people's hearts. We're not out there to make people feel good. I see. Uh, you know, 2 Corinthians 7.10 says, For godly sorrow works repentance to salvation not to be repented of. So we want people to get saved. In order to get saved, they've got to repent. In order to repent, there's got to be godly sorrow. And godly sorrow involves guilt. Um, you know, making people feel bad about what they've done, that, 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 they're a, that, they're a, that they're a criminal against God, that they're a rebel against God, that they're an enemy against God. They're, they're not a victim. That's right. Amen.